Hi, boys and girls. We're back to read more chapters of The Clash Trip from the Black Lagoon. Chapter 4, Wonder and Lightning. It's hard to fall asleep. I keep thinking about all the places we could go, and I worry about all the things that could happen. We might make a journey to the center of the earth, but in the middle, it's like the hot fudge on a Sunday. I don't even like to go into a closet. I'm happier when I can see the sky. Eric says I have closet rophobia. If we go far enough, then we'll come out in China. Then we could eat lunch at a Chinese restaurant. Or maybe we'll just go to the bottom of the ocean. There are many things down there with lots of teeth and lots of arms. It's also very dark. The deepest that I've ever been in the ocean is up to my ankles. So there they are. Maybe we'll go to Mars. They put you to sleep, and when you wake up, you're there. The things on Mars are even weirder than the things at the bottom of the ocean. They've got bigger teeth, longer arms with springs, and fingers like plungers. Their eyeballs are on stalks and wave around in the air. They all have bad breath and breathe through their ears. You have to put your head in a fishbowl and walk around in slow motion. Do you think Mars is really like that? I don't think so. Where in the world are we going to go? Or where out of the world? I close my eyes and wonder. Chapter 5. This must be D-Day. The alarm goes off at 5.30 in the morning. I hate getting up early. The chickens aren't even up yet. And I shuffle into the bathroom. My eyes are hardly open. I squeeze out some toothpaste and brush my teeth. Boy, it sure tastes weird. I look at the tube and it says brown shoe polish. Yuck. My shirt feels very small. Then I discover that my head is in the sleeve. My pants feel odd, too. I discover they are on backward. At least I won't mess up with my shoes. Wrong again. I have the left one on my right foot and the right one's on my knee. This is not going to be a great day. He's a mess. He's struggling. Chapter 6. Off we go. I wonder what I should pack. Randy says that you should be prepared for anything. He says that he's taking snowshoes, malaria pills, signal flares, a snake bite kit, and a lifeboat. I think I'll take my lucky rabbit's foot. Of course, it wasn't lucky for the rabbit. Oh well, I stumble downstairs for breakfast. I grab a box of cereal and pour some into the bowl. Then I pour in some milk. It all bubbles up. I look at the cereal box. It says, dishwashing powder. I guess I'll skip breakfast. I open the front door and step outside. It's dark and full of coats. Wrong door. I try again and I really step outside. It is just as dark, but there are no coats. Even the early birds aren't up yet. I feel like an early worm and wiggle to the corner. I wait there with my brown teeth chattering. Out of the gloom come two lights. It's the school bus. Mr. Fenderbender opens the door and I get in. All the kids are there, sitting stiff and staring straight ahead. They all have brown teeth. Everybody's breath smells horrible. A green fog covers all the windows. I guess we won't be singing camp songs today. After four minor collisions, Mr. Fenderbender stops and tells us to get out. Things have to get better, don't they? Chapter 7. Into the wild blue yonder. We're at a small airfield. Mrs. Green is standing by the first passenger plane ever made. It says, built by the wrong brothers on the side. As we climb aboard, she hands each of us a parachute. I guess we're not going to the museum. We strap them on and try to sit in our seats. I feel like a camel. Mr. Fenderbender puts on a pilot's cap with goggles and sits up front with Mrs. Green. They both try to figure out how to start the plane. Meanwhile, Eric the class clown pretends to be the flight attendant and gives the safety instructions. In case of the likely event of a water landing, your seat cushion can be used as a flotation unit. I look down. There is no seat cushion. This is definitely not first class. Doris asks what movie we'll be playing. 
We're showing a bunch of selected shorts, Eric answers. He smiles and then reaches into his backpack and pulls out his underwear. Gross, we yell. And they're all saying, gross, yuck. Mr. Fender, Mr. Fenderbender guns the engine. We're all pressed back into our seats. Happy landings, cackles Mrs. Green. Do you really think he's doing all those things? That does not sound like a field trip that you guys would go on, does it? We're going to read Chapter 8, Flying High Next Time. All right, boys and girls.